let's look at a simple example to help you get to grips with the thing step material circularity indicator calculator. For this example, we'll look at the circularity of a simple pen. On the left hand side of the bill of materials, we have the tube for the pen and the ink tube inside, a metal nib to do the writing, and a lid. We specified some generic materials for the pen. These are all virgin materials in this case. We're going to assume that the pen will be thrown in the bin at the end of its life and end up in a landfill. We're also going to assume that our pen lasts for two years until it's thrown out and that this is generally the case for pens of this type. The pen is very linear in this case and has an MCI of 0.1, indicating a linear product that hasn't decoupled from using non-renewable materials or producing waste. We can also see that the circularity of each of the components is also 0.1, we will now use the calculator to explore a few possible scenarios. Let's look at economics first because this is a possible motivation to explore circular models for this product. Looking at where we may be losing value from our linear model, we're most concerned about the pen tube as this comprises around 55% of the overall material value of the pen. Ideally, we would also account for manufacturing value, but in this simple calculator, we're only looking at the value of the raw materials. So let's see what we can do to improve the product by applying a circular model focusing on recapturing value. We've now updated our model to use a recycled grade for the tubes and nib, and we will ensure that these can be readily recycled in the markets we're selling the products into. We're going to assume that the collection system isn't perfect and that only 50% of the pens we put out onto the market will be collected for recycling. For the other 50% that aren't collected, the model will assume these are lost to the landfill along with all the pen nibs. The circularity is improved, and we're now at almost 0.3 overall, with the metal nib being slightly more circular because of the generally higher recycled content in the steel. In the ThinkStep model, we have provided approximate figures for recycled contents, recycling rates, embodied CO2 and material cost. These can all be overridden by entering values in the PSLs next to the default values. Naturally, if we can increase either the recycled content of our materials by carefully selecting suitable suppliers or if we can ensure a greater recycling rate by matching our materials to the recycling infrastructure of our markets, then we can also increase the circularity of our product, and this will be reflected in our MCI score. What if we're now concerned about all those lids that are going missing and what these might do to our reputation if they end up in the oceans or littering the streets? We'll update the calculation again, and this time we will use a home compostable bioplastic. We'll also source the feedstock for the lids from a regeneratively managed forest. This has increased the circularity of the lid to 1.0, so perfectly circular, and this has also increased our overall circularity to 0.4 for the whole pen. Perhaps if we make the pen last a bit longer, we can improve this. So now we've taken things a bit further, and we've made the pen a bit more reliable. The lifetime of our pen is now 3 years, putting it above the typical pen lifetime of 2 years. Doing this on top of the other measures we've applied increases the overall circularity to 0.6. You might also see that the circularity of each of the components has improved. That's because the increased utility applies to the whole product. Perhaps we can take things further still and have a model to refill and reuse these pens. To reflect this, we can change the destination of the output materials to reuse the pen tube, the ink tube, and the metal nib. We have, however, kept the source of the materials as being recycled grades because this is the first cycle of the product, and we don't yet have any reusable products available. Doing this on top of our other measures would bring our circularity closer to 0.7 for this life cycle of the product. For the second life cycle onwards, though, we would be using more reused pens already, and our circularity would be closer to 0.9. The only reason it isn't perfectly circular in this case is the missing 50% of the pen components we're not collecting. This model is simplistic because it doesn't account for the more complex issues of mixed reuse and recycled material. Still, those sorts of complexities can be accommodated through adjustments in the calculations. This last point does, however, highlight something important about metrics for the circular economy. When implementing these, we need to start thinking about all of our complementary metrics beyond the impact of the single life cycle. Circularity, after all, isn't a constant to be defined by what happens initially, but it evolves from one life cycle to the next. We're concerned about the net result of all of the cycles of a product. How we incorporate the complementary metrics varies according to the metrics we choose relevant to our business, products, or the particular markets we seek to serve. Likewise, the costs and impacts associated with the model change as the circular business model is implemented and as products age and are reused, recycled, or deteriorate. To make our pen more durable, in our example, we may need to use a more expensive material initially or one with a higher environmental impact. This impact would, we hope, be offset by the lower need for new materials in the second and subsequent uses of the pen as an avoided burden. We're lowering the cost and impact per use compared to our disposable alternative. There is a place for MCI to be used, not just for designing circular products, but also as a monitoring tool to track how our circular model is performing. 
to verify that we've created something circular and that our implementation of our business model, our engagement with the product user and all the surrounding infrastructures and public policies needed are working to support us in delivering the value we seek from the circular economy.